Let's begin with the last section of the course, routing. We'll start with first adding support for the Angular router. To get set up with the Angular router is quite easy, but there are some things we need in place for it to be considered set up. Specify a base element in index.html. Import the router module and tell the root module about it. Set up a routing dictionary. Decide on where to place the viewport of your application. That is, decide where in the page your content should be placed. Interact with the routing service if you want to investigate things such as routing or query parameters, or if you need to programmatically route the user to another page in your application. Let's start with specifying the base element. We need to inform Angular about the base path we want to use, so it can properly build and recognize the URLs as the user browses the website. Our first task will be to insert a base href statement within our head element. The base tag informs the browser about the path it should follow while attempting to load external resources, such as media or CSS files, once it goes deeper into the URL hierarchy. The next step is importing and setting up the router module. First things first, we need to import the router module. We do this in the root module of our application. So we add a file called app.module.ts and insert this line at the top of the file. Once we've done so, it's time to add the router module as a dependency of the app module class. Router module is a little bit of a different module though. It needs to be initialized at the same time as it's added as a dependent module. It looks like this. We can see here that it points to variable routes that we have yet to define. After that, we'll define the routes. The routes are a list of route entries that specify what routes exist in the application and what components should respond to a specific route. It can look like this. Every item in the route list is an object with a number of properties. The two most important properties are path and component. The path property is the routing path. Note that you should specify the path value without a leading slash. So, setting it to products means that we define what would happen if the user navigates to slash products. The component property points to the component that should respond to this route. The pointed out components, template and data is what the user will see when navigating to the route. The first specified route defines the path products and the last route item specifies two asterisks, which means it matches any path. Order matters. Had we defined the root item of asterisks first, then products would never have been hit. The reason this was defined last was that we wanted a route that would take care of the case when a user enters an unknown route. Rather than showing the user a blank page, we can now show them a nice page defined by page not found components template. Once we've come this far, it's time to define a viewport where the rooted component should be rendered. Normally, we would build an application where part of the content is static and part of it can be switched out like this. At this point, we involve the router outlet element. It's an element that tells the router that this is where you should render the content. This is all we need for a minimal setup of the router.